So you wanna learn how to draw wild style graffiti? I've got some great tips to get you there. Let's go. So we gotta start in with the base structure of the letter. That's your most simple uppercase R. What if we drop points along this and actually make the letter straight in between every single one of those? What that leaves us with is the straight letter structure of the R. And from here, it's super easy around each of those lines to kind of expand it and make a box. Now I promise, don't think too hard here. Just follow your path and expand around it. And you'll kind of already have that kind of sensibility of an R in the graffiti style. Let me do a quick outline around it so we can get a better idea about where each of these is against that original structure. So here we actually picked just hard corners everywhere. The lines kind of intersect. But something fun to do is actually chamfer corners. So what that means is to kind of just take a 45 degree angle right at the end of your corner and that'll round some of your edges off. So for the uppercase R, the top end, you know, you got the big swoop in there actually. So what if we actually cut these two corners a little bit? That'll give us more of that round style that the first original letter had. So now, now don't go slash in each and every corner, but use it sparingly into where you might actually want a more curved feature going down. So this is more or less your straight letter style of an R. Wild style is crazy because it has a bunch of details and add-ons, but we actually want to keep a really similar structure to the center of our letter even when we start building it up. So what can we do to this base structure that is our straight letter to really add some extra you know, add-ons and flavor to it? Well, something super easy is to add little like kickouts or tabs. So as the letter comes down here, maybe we extend that box back up a little bit so you're, you're kind of standing on a little bit more down at the bottom, or maybe you kind of complement this backside. You got a lot of stuff going on at the top of the R. Maybe the bottom section needs a little bit more weight to it. You can even add one to the top. You know, it's really common to see the top of the R curve around like that, so maybe we do that as well. We could probably add an extra tab there. And so what we're doing here is we're adding small sections to our internal structure that help add more details and more portions to actually stylize. So let's take that structure into kind of like a hybrid style. So what you want to look for here is, does the letter look kind of good just as is? If you don't have a good structure to it to begin with, it's probably going to look a little bit wonky as you develop it up. So something, you know, I like the angle of this one much better than kind of that straight top. So let's try that again. You can see I've, I've, you know, I've tilted this line the same angle I tilt the front there. So they're kind of complementing. You know, this top section kind of has a similar vibe to the, the leg that comes down at the bottom. So decisions like that also can help symmetry and, and, and build the letter up as you go. So now let's, let's just simply box this up and see what those extra kind of tab sections add for us. So you can begin to see we've actually made a new kind of box style. So anywhere that has a tab is kind of like a zigzag almost to it. So it doesn't change a ton from the original structure, but this hybrid style gives you a lot more to work with. And so now all of a sudden you're, you're adding detail and complexity to that letter. So much like the first one, we can choose corners to, to champ for there. And I kind of felt it out down here when I was just going and naturally felt that, you know, if I came to a point down here, that kicks the leg out really weird. So how about we, we chamfer that big section and it's, you know, much, much more significant than the round up here, but you can see that it, it does have that same style where it's, you're just kind of cutting that corner at 45 degrees and it lets that leg kind of sit down a little bit. And then I think for a similar reason, we could use one right here so that, you know, as your eye goes around and looks through the piece, you know, you might follow this line down and it's not coming to a point and looking all funny. By chamfering it, it has a way to kind of finish into the piece and, and follow that way out. And now this tab's looking a little bit low, you know, we're leaving this huge negative space up here. So how about I, I just change the angle of that a little bit? So that way it takes up a little bit more of that. Something I don't particularly care about is the fact that these two almost look like they're sharing a line now. So I might pull the top end out a little bit just so it, it kind of jogs in a touch more. 
you'll notice as you develop pieces that when you have two lines that are like perfectly even and parallel, it can catch the viewer's eyeball like a ton when you're reading through it, so it, it makes it a little bit distracting. So I like to only use parallel lines when it's really, really forcing and you're, you're trying to make something look deliberately parallel. I don't like when they kind of naturally happen against one another. Maybe we'll extend out some of our lines here. This could be cool if we, we bring this line all the way across and it meets where the bottom leg comes out. So that way you can see both sections of it. And that's kind of, you know, where your style comes in is, you know, are you extending lines a ton? Are you keeping them really acute? You know, what are you doing to this now kind of more developed structure to, to help you know, make it a little bit more detailed. And of course, wild styles start to use like bits, which are, you know, small little square guys that add a little bit to detail, or you can even do some with a half round on it. And these are really just used to add detail or add contrast to the actual structure of the piece. So bits styled like this can really accent a piece and add a little bit of depth to it. You might, you might see it here where we've got this huge negative area that, you know, doesn't have much going on with it. But what if we threw a couple bits in over here, kind of, off the edge of the, the back here. It helps fill that out without having to need extra portions of the letter to fill it out because you know not all letters take up the same amount of space. Bits are a great kind of fill in for, for areas that are dead zones or you know just spaces that the letter doesn't naturally want to exist in. And it also works great because now I've got you know 3D elements that I can I can work off back there and it just you know adds a little bit of almost like a background element so you can you can see where the letter is versus those. I'm just going to do a little bit of vanishing point 3D here and drop it off so we can see kind of how the letter actually stands up off the page. You know, we haven't changed much of the structure as compared to the straight letter. You know, we added a little bit of tabs here and there and it's already, you know, a ton more complex. You can see like the, the letter's got more like life to it. It's kind of standing on itself a little bit better. And that's our perfect like first step into more complexity and more wild style. And so familiarizing yourself with just these subtle little add-ons will really get going in towards that wild style flavor. And we actually won't deviate too much from this now. We'll find that this is a perfect structure to start your wild style. And wild style really does come into, you know, where are our arrows going to go? Where are our extra hookups going to so go? So you'll find lots of the kind of detail and the intricacies that wild style has is the add-ons to this structure. So if we were to try to sample where we take this arrow and try to incorporate it in here, we did not feel like there's a natural place to put it. You know, you can tuck it in behind the R, you can tuck it in you know, down at the bottom of the leg, but we haven't really left much room for it. I think the best way to remedy that is actually start with a structure that has a lot of dead space in the middle of it and use really kind of skinnier boxes. So this way our base structure is nice and spread out. And let's also try to keep our boxes a little bit more narrow so it leaves some extra space to work with for the add-ons and the complex pieces. Now I can selectively go around and start thickening some of them up. Maybe I'll extend this leg up a little bit further because we've left ourselves a lot of room to work with. So we got our base structure here. What are some extra places we can add little details? Well, you know, you kind of got a curl style to the bottom of the R at times. I feel like that's kind of like a wrought iron gate style. 
but that leaves a little tab here and it rounds it out a little bit. So what if we use that round at the bottom there to add some detail down in here? Because you know, you're left with a bunch of empty area there. Why not try to take it up a little bit with the natural portion of the letter? And what does that do? So you know, you got that big round here. You might not actively notice it, but your eyeball wants to kind of follow that line and see where it ends up. So if we draw that in, now we've got this nice like flow to the letter. You know, the bottom of the leg isn't as straight. And you know, we use super straight sections beforehand, but that's not necessarily the case in wild style. Wild style is a combination of straight and curved lines. And so try that out, see what, see what curving that in does. And this actually, you know, looking at it could be a great way to incorporate that arrow. So we come around here and you swoop back. Now you've got like a lot of momentum going. You wanna get rid of that. And arrows are a great way to like exhaust your momentum. So putting your arrow like back on attack, you might come here and shoot it out that way. And that gives you like a reason to finish that line off into like a very terminated point. So we can, we can sketch our arrow in and try to just feel out where that wants to go. Because a lot of time, you know, you're doing a visual movement while you read graffiti. So having that, that flow to it and that double back, you know, this could even be cool if we, we came in and then we cut it across like that. So it could almost cut back down a little bit. And what I like to do is follow that, and that's my center point to my arrow there. And so now we found a pretty natural way to incorporate where that arrow is gonna land. And something cool with arrows is, you know, we, we had all that flow and momentum, but who's to say this is the only line out that happens? I love to double up my arrows. So what if a second arrow kind of was slightly different, came in a little bit lower, didn't, didn't go up as high? We can add that in here. And now you get like, you get the double attack as well as you get, you know, a little bit of variety there with how the reader follows through it. Cause their eye might even derivative, you know, their eye might even move a little bit as compared to where you, you planned it. So that gives you a good chance to, to catch either one of them. So we'll have to, we'll have to do something with, with this line down here, you know, it's, certainly part of the letter body at this point. So let's let's figure out, you know, maybe we round it off with this bottom edge here. Or we could even tuck it in a little bit tighter. So you can see my my sketch style is is getting a little bit more messy as compared to, you know, something super linear that you can kind of plan and cut but what I'm still doing all the same is I'm feeling out where that structure is going. You know, right now I've just kind of added this curl structure into the mix. Now let's feel that out. Let's see what those boxes are. I basically just, you know, this is the center line of the curl. I basically am just following that around and, and squaring it up just the same. So now we've got this big curl that we didn't account for before. I really did appreciate the, the kind of square off we had down here. So maybe we'll, we'll do something extra. Maybe we'll add a, a section down here to continue to square that off. And, and that way we don't get overrun by the curl, basically. This section too can take take a little bit of that square at the bottom up, and, and then we can integrate the, the curl a little bit different. So maybe I'll, I'll drop the curl up a little bit so it doesn't come down as hard. And that way we can still, you know, this is the line I'm looking to keep, that really nice edge to it. Because that gives you, a, you know, kind of the whole R is standing on that almost. Cool. And now that we've like added a section in here, I think we're, we're due for something in this section. You know, there, you got this line pointing this way. You got that line pointing this way. Maybe we, we have this line also come in here. And we can just do that with one of our, our simple tab boxes. And now what I'm gonna do is, you know, I just rough that in. Now let's kind of feel it out. Let's see, maybe I think it'd be a little bit better at this angle. So let's, let's rough it in at that angle instead. And that way we have, you know, a little bit easier entry into the entire letter. 
But something we now added is, you know, we have a bunch going on way to left. You know, the R starts here, but we've got a ton of stuff going on way out here. Maybe we need to train the eye in a little bit better. So how about we do a, I like to call these like little scales almost. So you can do a couple of these rounds. And it mocks the, the edge here. So it gives the physical presence to the letter that's not necessarily a bit that's outside, but it gives you also more, more going on over there. I think I'll chamfer this as well so it, it pulls that line a little bit further to the left because if I were to go straight up here, now the, the eyeball of the R is kind of to the right, but I do like it if it cuts in a little bit. So it, you can see that it like wants to go back in that way. And sure enough, we can add some bits and stuff to it now too. So maybe we want some bits down here to you know, take up some more of that, that negative area. And now you don't have to necessarily fill every section. You know, not every letter has to be a big bulk, but when you are drawing a singular letter like this, it does help to have you know, little bits of extra space taken up so you're not kind of left with that big cavity down at the bottom. This line worked pretty good to start, but maybe I'll add a little kind of tracer section. I don't really know what to call these, but it's basically I repeat that same line just a little bit offset so it gives it you know, a second step almost. And one of my signature bits is the II combo. You get two regular bits, but you gotta dot them. So let's take a look at that structure that we've kind of now ended up with. You can see we followed suit with our original structure quite a bit, but we've got a lot of new add-ons and we've kind of like doubled lines in some sections, but we're not doing anything that's like total haphazard. You know, the bottom section that is this curl could very well work as itself in, you know, even if we only had it there. So it's not like, you're not doing things that are competing with the original letter. You're just doing things that, you know, add a second version of that or, or add on to it in a kind of complementary way. And you know, even our bits, if we draw those in, they're filling extra space up without trying to take away from the original structure. You know, if I were to try and add this level of complexity right from the start, I'm sure something would get a little bit wonky. But the fact that we start from a really nice kind of structure and then add little just complements and double ups where we have, you know, the, the R that comes around, that could stand on itself as be the only bottom section here. We don't have to have the straight letter anymore. But what I like is, you know, let's add some layer to it. Let's add both of those in the mix. And what that stacking of the feature allows is the letter to develop from that original structure without, you know, a bunch of competing features and all throughout it. It's almost essential to have some 3D on wild style. So we'll kind of do a vanishing point 3D off of here. Vanishing point's great. So you kind of just pick an area off to the side of the piece and you draw a line from each end directly down to that. And I just try to pick, you know, a little bit of an inch maybe in distance, and yet you, you pull all those lines to that. Vanishing point's great because it gives you like a, a point where all your pieces kind of growing out from. Super easy to do as well. I'm gonna leave this one a little bit messy just so you can still see the emphasis of like where that letter is actually coming from. But let's double up the outline so we can get a little bit better contrast. I'm actually gonna do some shading in the 3D just to add a little bit extra detail into some of those dark sections where the letter might cover itself up and add a little bit of shadow. Definitely not a master at this part, but if you get it half right, it really does add a lot to the piece. So anywhere that's like a deep pocket in here, I'm gonna shade extra so it draws the little shadow in there. And then also down at the bottom, you'll naturally have more shadow than as compared to the top section that's peeking out more. And the utility of 3D is actually to show you like which sections on top of which and just make it a lot easier to view. So here where this little bit kind of curls up, having a dark shadow on the 3D down there 
makes it really apparent that that's standing at a different area and a different depth than the 3D that's far behind it. And same for, for this tab, if I shade this in, now all of a sudden that section is going to pop off a lot more from, from the 3D and makes the 3D really, really a background element that shows you just kind of where everything lands. And once I have the light gray down, I'll try to just go in and, and pick out where the really darker sections are and, and slowly just feel out which ones are which. I'm definitely going to darken up some of our outlines here. You can even see those a little bit better. And it's also important to pick which line is going to be your, your final line here. So here we got the big swoop. You know, I think it'd be cool if it tucked behind the little leg here and then over top as it comes back around. So these bottom ones, I'll erase a little bit. But then this top section, you know, that line is, I'm, I'll commit to that line as well as this one. The top section arrow. And instead I'll erase, a, erase across the, the vertical leg there. Now that interwines each piece. And you know, since we're working with pencil here, I can certainly add some shadow within the piece to show that like those guys are, are well on top of the, the others. So I'm going to leave all the little interior structures in there just so you can see how we went from, you know, the straight letter down to the hybrid, down to the wild style. And it's like all those little transitions, but keeping the same center structure is really what makes graffiti like a developmental style. It really is cool to see how you can go from a straight letter structure that's really typical, go into kind of like a hybrid, a little bit more developed style, and then right into a wild style where you're basically just, you know, making sure you have room to add all your add-ons and your hit-ups and your crisscrosses with your arrows. So I can definitely recommend giving this a try. You know, go all the way from the ground up with the straight letter to the hybrid to the wild style and see how the structures kind of transition between the two. You know, it's at the core of the same letter R each time over, but you're adding a little bit of detail when you come from the straight letter down to the hybrid and then you're adding room for all your add-ons like your arrows and your bits when you go into the wild style. But at the end of the day, all these R's have the same direction to them and they kind of at the core have all the same features too. You're just further developing it and leaving area for more expression and stylizing of that letter when you go up to the bigger style. Well, there are certainly way more intricacies than just the letter R can count for. So let's jump into the wild style alphabet. I think it'd be fun to have the O nice and centered in the middle of this. And you know, of course, we've got more than one letter this time. So we're going to be having some influence on the structure and how each letter is shaped by some of the other letters next door. In some cases, I was able to go a little bit more complex right from the start. You know, and that's just some of my familiarity with some of these letters and how they work well. So feel that out, you know, that comes with your style too, as far as how you want to start that base structure off and, and really build it up. If you don't want to do the whole alphabet, start with, you know, six or 10 letters instead. Just try not to default to just the same, you know, four letters of your name or five letters of your name time and time again. It can be super helpful to test out other letters and try to learn them for what they are. You know, you might not feel super duper comfortable or there might not be a lot to them that uh, makes you kind of super inspired. But what you can do there is, is learn how that letter works, try to study it a little bit. And then take some of those learnings and put them back into your own letters. And it kind of forces you to try new things out. You know, this whole set took me well over four or five hours to do, so it's not something I claim to have a ton of time for, but it is helpful even, you know, for me to go back in and, and try to stress test my letters, see what forcing them next to, to new combinations looks like, as well as, you know, maybe force the, the change of pace a little bit here. I went for more of a, a circular theme this time around to try to, you know, not do it so linearly. In the last couple times I did my alphabet, I felt like it kind of stacked on itself because I was just going A to Z right through. Here I, you know, went from the middle out trying to feel out how each letter can work a little bit better. I did go around with that black outline right after my pencil and then I was able to take all that pencil away. Something to maybe take into consideration there is that it does bleed a little bit when you do your fill afterwards. So it might look a little bit better on film to do the black outline first, but it, it does kind of work against you a little bit. You have to be a little bit slower with your fill and 
be really careful that you don't make that black bleed now into your fill section. So just a word to the wise. And you will see I actually come in with the skinny Sharpie here just to make sure that I can get those corners like super pointed. That's something I like to do, have one size outline for the majority of the piece and then come in with that fine one and really kind of just touch in where is the extra, extra detailed sections. And that too can help correct lines that got a little bit wonky. You know, it's much easier to come in just a little bit thicker with the skinny line and correct it rather than try to have to correct it with just the big fat one that's you know already as wide as you really want it to be. So I wanted to just go for a super high contrast kind of rainbow style here. So I went across and just filled solid all the way across the board. Felt like that would look really sweet and learning from the past few kind of alphabet tutorials, it seemed to be a, a nice safe bet here. So in total, I only have you know maybe five or six different fill colors here, but I tried to pick you know one after the other to spread those out across the piece. And what I'm looking for there when I pick you know where does the next yellow one go or where does the next green one go is trying to find you know is it spaced pretty decently from the last green one I put down? Is it you know kind of complementary and spread across you know the overall alphabet? You know nothing worse than having like three green letters all right next to each other. You know you want to spread that out so it visually spreads the colors a little bit. And then on top of that, I pretty much just picked a complementary color, you know, a darker shade of that fill to really add the shadows and the 3D kind of elements within the fill and also, you know, add all the doodads and whatnot to make it really pop. So when you are doing multicolor fills or complementary styles in this case, you know, it's fun to accentuate the style of the letter or accentuate the actual original structure of the letter. So you'll see a ton of my interiors are like just following the core structure of the letter. So you can, you can kind of double down on where the, the reader should be reading as well as, you know, double down on giving it some extra depth in the respects where it, it naturally wants to have those pieces. So you might kind of see that similar style to, you know, the grayscale where I left all the, you know, the sketchy lines in there by putting the high contrast, you know, darker fill in there. Now I'm able to kind of add some of those back in and, and really accentuate what was the original core of the letter now back again into like the final, final piece. You know, I stuck to solid colors here. So the halftone effects were great to add a little bit of extra, you know, 3D pizzazz in the mix. Well, I think we did it here. This is by far my best alphabet to date. Super happy that I was able to go through the step-by-step -step process about how to develop your letters all the way from literally the, the center core of a basic straight letter up to the more wild style piece. And I hope, you know, some of these tips were helpful even getting those add-ons and the arrows and stuff in the mix. Of course, if you've got any questions or comments, drop me a DM over on Instagram. Always happy to help and give you guys suggestions or tips about what you're working on. You can follow me at S, the number one, V-E. That's really gonna do it for me. Stay up.